Welcome back. WNST, Towson, Baltimore, and Baltimore Positive. Still broadcasting in high-quality mono sound at AM 1570 throughout the holidays. We are going to be experiencing a little bit of best of. I'm, I'm, I'm getting the archives together as we look at the Cleveland game this week, as we look at Atlanta through the holidays. But most importantly, this week we're celebrating. It is my 31st anniversary on Baltimore Radio. I'm wearing my Costas gear today. I will be giving away these holiday cash drops scratch-offs in the Maryland Lottery, gifted to me by Ros Lane last week on the Maryland Crab Cake Tour at Fadley's. Uh, we're encouraging everyone to ship your crab cakes, get the orders in early. We're going to be in Dundalk at Costas with the Rock and Roll Hall of Famer, the Queen of Dundalk, Gina Shock's going to be joining us on Thursday, as well as John Allen and a whole bunch of folks from uh, Hammerjacks. This guy's excited. He comes uh, on every week, but I did sort of upstage him last week. We're having Roz on for a while, uh, talking about her husband, Greg, and she got the crab cakes out of Fadley's, by the way, John Martin, but uh, you this is this is a big announcement I, I know for mobile wagering for sports wagering we've seen all the ads on all the social media on the games and whatnot this is when we get a little bit of a timpani right like a little bit of an ed mcmahon moment for you right you know what you talked about going to the archives i'm going to tell you right now nestor that today's show right now is going to automatically be an instant classic really why what this, happened you give me a million dollars is today my day <laughs> <laughs> no, you know what? And, and we, we joke about it, and I'm sure we will over the next few minutes, about the Cleveland-Baltimore tie-in. I mean, here you are, Rock and Roll Hall of Famer, happens to be located in Cleveland, Ohio. Cleveland, I've been to Cleveland. Yeah, I've been, I've been to the Hall. It's, it's wonderful. It's the best part of Cleveland. I'm, it, maybe not, but it's a pretty good part of Cleveland. Careful, admit. careful, careful. Well, what is it's, the best part of Cleveland then? I, you know what? I, I don't know. I don't know. There, there are so many. There are so many tied for number one. But you know what? That, that's that's secondary. Today's big news, and yeah, we're talking about sports wagering in a minute. We, you know, next month. Talk about and congratulations on your thirty-one years. Incidentally, every single one of them was uphill. Yeah. <laughs> Isn't that the truth? Um, but next month in January, Maryland Lottery will be getting its. 50th anniversary year, 50 years as Maryland Lottery. And many of those years, we used the traditional uh, numbered lottery ball. Oh, I see it. All right. There you go. There it is. There it I is. I remember that. My wife thought when I got this gig that I would be the one that could go on TV and suck the balls up. Remember, you know, like. Well, you know, you know what? You better hurry because the traditional balls and the lottery machines as of next week gone gone how are we doing gone. it then how, how are these being paid a, com a computer-based system called a random number generator rng will be used by the folks here at maryland lottery and what that means to players is several things first off the games don't change pick three pick four pick five bonus match five multi-match these are the five games that will no longer be selected with numbered lottery balls and mechanical machines we're using a computer-based system that will randomly generate the numbers. Now, there are over 30 lotteries in the U.S. and Canada that today use this technology. It is a modernization in the industry. It's been going on for several years. Matter of fact, every time people buy a quick pick ticket in the state of Maryland for a draw game, or they play Kino, or they play racetracks, they're using an RNG system. So we've been using it for years. But now we're officially going to roll over these, these next five games. That starts next week. The biggest change is the drawings will no longer be televised. And so the uh, RNG system creates an animated video that will be on our website. People can go to the watch the drawings page. Much like when the balls come out when I'm sitting in Costas, right? I I Kino, the, 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 the exactly. numbers just generate, right? I understand. Okay. It, exactly. Exactly. That's a great analogy. So if you're already familiar with Kino and how that's displayed, it'll be the same type. Animations will be a little different, obviously, but the same premise. And that starts next week, and it will be a, uh, a, a, a an interesting time as we turn the page. You know, we, we're always looking to modernize the, the business. You have to, Nestor. You do it in your business. We do it in our business. I've modernized uh, this week. This conversation will be transcribed now by Otter, and I'm putting transcriptions up on the website so we have Google Crawl for words and that people can actually read. And it's not always perfect. It's not it's not the Q&A, you know, like completely. But we're, we're always trying to do things. Tell me this. Who's, who's the person that's going to pick the last ball? I, I need to know this ah. because my wife is going to – is that you? I mean, I hear you're in charge there. Like, who's well. the last person that gets a standard? Because I was always jealous of Sarah Fleischer and, and Kurt McEwen. I even had a huge conversation with Mickey Coachella as the other – 
uh, he ever did it because it was always a 98 rock always a wbal was always on tv i mean back when i was a kid it wasn't sure. but that always looked like the highest honor at all to stand there and oversee the balls as they came up and right and the sixes yes. and nines always had to turn them right well yeah yeah and there's a little underscore so you know if it's a six or a nine but you know what no one physically touches those those numbered uh, balls anymore that is uh they the the tube displays it and they're just you know subtly turned for the camera and you know what i don't know who's going to have that honor probably our existing staff but that would have been a great promo too bad we missed that uh well, we'll do that maybe later for some I come else. to your office to pick up these scratch offs to give I still have a handful of Ravens to give away as well mm -hmm. uh, this is our final crab cake tour stop of the year over Casas because 31 years I just got to stop for Christmas uh, and, and get myself together here for the the Browns game and the, and the Falcons game but um, you know I, I would say this in, uh, in 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 all 50 years I come to your offices and every time I'm there I see all the old posters and the old wishbone and the old logo of the Maryland lottery from when I was a kid give me a little preview of this 50 year uh, anniversary and I, I mean I would think that you guys are really rolling out and doing some special things next year right well absolutely it's, it's interesting you, you you went back to some of the nostalgia and I, I can't tease it too much we'll have plenty of time to tease it over the next several months but don't be surprised if some of that old look comes back again how's that for a tease well, see I would recognize it because I'm one old and I've lived here my whole life, right? So, I mean, right. I'm 54 years on the planet now. So the lottery, I guess, came around when I was four or five years old. I didn't really know a world without the lottery, but the pick three, and then after that pick four, it was like, a, it was a staple of seven o'clock hour television, right? Like all of my life, they have picked the numbers in the middle of, pick your TV show, Jeopardy, whatever was on at seven o'clock at night over the last 50 years. Sometimes it was in the news as well that they would, Pull the lottery ball. So, I mean, I'm familiar with right. that. I'm familiar with all the logos. So I will be looking out for the wish. The wishbone was my favorite, you know, the late seventies, early eighties. Well, you, you should expect a little bit of nostalgia. You should also expect something new, some new games, some new promotions. And, and we, as, as we go through the year, they'll be uh, slowly revealed month after month. So, so when we talk after the first of the year, we'll have some things already in the hopper for January. And, and we'll talk about the, those things there, but you know, what we always have regardless are winners. And we have some great winner stories at mdlottery.com this week. And, and let me just share a couple of them with you because these are the ones that are just, that, that make this job truly well, When fun. you win money in the, during the holidays, even better, right? Like literally, dead of winter, it's cold out. First thing I'm thinking is, I'm getting somewhere. Well, I'm hitting St. Somewhere, <laughs> as Jay Bubba would say. <laughs> and you know what's fun about it too is that some of these stories and when you actually hear what's behind it, uh, you just kind of scratch. You have to laugh. You have to laugh. Here's a young man from Bowie who actually made a mistake at the vending machine. And, you know, the vending machines are fairly intuitive, but sometimes you can get caught. And the, the, the poor young man got a little frustrated. Net of it is he ends up winning $50,000. How's that for making a mistake? From a mistake. He was, you, you can get the details at, at mdlottery.com, but he was, you know, trying to play tickets, but he ended up cashing out. So he put another 20 in and now he had 40 in and now he was confused. So he just said, well, give me four Powerball tickets. And one of those ends up being a $50,000 winner. Great story from, from him. Another great story is then we have people who are just traveling, just passing along on the highways of life, and they are, bam, winners. A, a young lady who was a traveling nurse from Atlanta, Georgia, uh, happened to be working in Elkton during the pandemic, uh, ends up uh, buying a, uh, 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 I believe it's our ski ball ticket, $30,000 winner. Uh, a guy from Pennsylvania, an iron worker working in D.C., driving through Hagerstown on his way home, stops $50,000 Powerball winner. So, you know, unfortunately, the storyline here is we, we have Marylanders investing in, in the Chamber of Commerce or tourism. People are leaving with, with the money. Thankfully, they're coming back and, and they're, uh, they're, they're, they're winning some more. Uh, but fun stories like that, 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 that are all part of our winner stories, mdlottery.com. Read all about it. I stopped in Hagerstown uh, Sunday night after the Ravens game. I went to the Ravens game. Mike uh, Tomlin gave me a credential. So I worked, did my thing. And I stopped in Hagerstown, but I didn't get 50 grand. I, I got donuts. I, I stopped at Crumpy's and got nighttime, 9, oh. 9 p.m. donuts on the way home. Fresh. I had the little holes, the red velvet. It was delicious. Uh, John Martin is here. He is the director of all things at Maryland Lottery and Gaming. I'm going to be giving away these holiday cash drops uh, on Thursday at Costas as part of my 31st anniversary. It's also brought to you by our friends at Goodwill and Window Nation, 866 90 
Nation as well. Um, I, I do want to say this on on anniversaries and getting together. I feel bad that you're not out getting this crab cake. I mean, Roz got all these crab cakes, and I thought, like, this was a big week for you, right? Because the numbers come in. Yeah. This used to just be a lottery gig for you, right? It used to be pick three, pick four, <laughs> a little lotto, a little right. Powerball. Now, all of a sudden, we've got $200 free for $5. Cover your bets. All this stuff that you were talking about here for a year and a half is all now real. It's live. It's football season, obviously. We got games on Saturday this week all day long, right? Next week, all day Saturday for this. Give me a little bit of a report as to how this is going. And I don't want to say nervousness on your part or the agency and getting the thing open, but it was a lot of heavy lifting to get mobile open. It wasn't that long ago you were sitting here saying it's coming, it's coming. Now we actually have reports from the month of November, correct? Yeah, exactly. This this last week we had our first report that included mobile wagering, and 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 let me just kind of step back a little bit because at the beginning of November, um, the first three weeks of the month of November were very strong for the nine retail locations. Matter of fact, it was probably trending to be uh, potentially their best month in, uh, in in the retail side. And and then the last week of the month hit, and we opened up uh, uh, mobile wagering, and as we knew, the pendulum swung all the way hard to the other side. So away from, from retail uh, towards the mobile. And we had seven sports books that opened up uh, initially on the 21st of November, which was the controlled demo day. And then um, for, for real on the 23rd. And, and what that meant is that, uh, and I've, I've told, told other people here within the building, it was really the perfect storm on the mobile side. You had an incredibly pent up demand from players. Marylanders had been waiting two years since the referendum and easily a year since the retail opened. So you had people really chomping at the bit to get at it. You had then seven sports books, some of the top names in the sports book industry fighting for market share. It was, you know, like a shotgun start. They were all the starting line and bam, it was fast and furious. And we've seen it, right? You've seen advertising. You've seen these free promotional offers. They invested heavily in advertising and promotion, so much so that six of the seven sports books actually didn't make a dime. They, they lost money in the first month. Only one, only the folks at Bingo World actually were in the black in November. Uh, that's not sustainable. That, that's not a way to run a business. So, but we expected that. We expected them to overspend, to seed the market with promo play, to fight for, for, for market share. And look at it from the player standpoint. You may even know people, maybe even someone you know, close to you, that probably got all seven apps because they were getting 200 bucks here, they were getting 500 bucks there. They, you know, why wouldn't they? I, I understand the mentality. I don't necessarily feel comfortable about it. Uh, I hope they're playing responsibly, but I understand the mentality from both sides of the equation. You've got players just, you know, gimme, gimme, gimme. And, and most of the time they're, you know, they're, they're winning, they're losing, it's back and forth. But that's what you saw, the net effect of it. By the end of November, we had over $200 million wagered combined on retail and mobile. The vast majority, $186 million of that on mobile. But the ultimate net was seven hundred and four thousand dollars to the retail or to the uh, education fund, the, the blueprint for Maryland's future fund. Um, so that continual investment on the sports book side of putting out promotional offers is not sustainable. They know that we know that. And we put some guardrails in place. So in the second year of operation, they have unlimited promo play the first year. So and that's still another 10 months that. I, if I'm a new, and I haven't downloaded any of them, but any of them, they will be continuing these kinds of first time offer that that'll be going on for a while, probably going on to beginning of football season next year. Right. Well, let, let, let's look at that. And, I, and that's why I love this, this longer formats. I mean, I, I, I have more than 10 seconds to explain it to an audience um, here. Here's what's going to happen. And, and let's, let's make it easy for all of 2023, the entire calendar year, January to December, 2023, they will be in this unlimited free promo play. If they continue to invest like they did in November and they end up with a net loss for the year, that if impacts their 2024 capability because we're putting a 20% cap on promo in 24 and beyond. So if they choose unwisely 
if they choose to keep this level of investment and have zero dollars to show on the on the net gain side, meaning they've lost money every month, they will have zero promotion dollars in 2024. Well, they don't want to do that. So they're at some point, the business decision they need to make is, okay, at what point do we start pumping the brakes? Because we want to make sure that we show a positive number in 23, whether it's a million, 10 million, 100 million, whatever it is, because 20% of that number, let's make it simple. Let's say they show a $10 million positive return in 2023. 20% of that $2 million becomes their promotional budget for 2024. So how they manage their 2023 promotion throughout the year will determine what they can drive in promo play in 2024. Did that make sense? It did. It did. And it does. Um, I, I just think about the consumer, right? So sure. regular, to your point, you could download a handful of apps, get 200 bucks here. It, it really is about the first better too, right? Like if you get ahead, you then pad enough, you don't really cash out because you want to continue to play. And somewhere in there, you're literally playing with house money, right? Like, and the house money is their money. And that, really affects the state's draw on this for, for the blueprint, right? Exactly. And that's exactly what happened in November. There were 63, nearly $64 million invested by the sportsbook operators in promo play. A total handle of $186 million was played. It's not simple math. You just can't take the 64, subtract it from the 186 and say, well, gee, if we had no promo play, we would have had over $120 million that was taxed. No. If you had no, no promo play, people wouldn't have played. Exactly. And right. to your point, they paid the promo play. They got $200. Let's say they won $500. Well, they're playing that $500 then. They so, treat it like my Venmo. Like my Venmo, all it ever does is I just, it just, there's a, but there's a couple grand in my Venmo. I don't even know how it got there. I sold a ticket here. I did this. I bought that. And my friend sent me some money and I never use it. I don't know what to use it for. <laughs> <laughs> Well, well, you're right. And, 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 that's, and that's the, I don't want to say it's the danger, but that's the reality of what these numbers mean. So, so December, I don't know you about you, but I haven't seen much of a, a pullback on, on TV advertising and promotional play offers. Maybe a little bit. But, you know, my well, sense I would think is the Super Bowl would also be a big part of that. And obviously, locally, the better the Ravens do, the more just general interest they're in if they're playing two and three playoff games next month, right? Right. And then, and then you get a Super Bowl in the, in the second week of February. You know, you catch your breath a little bit, but then you've got March Madness. So the, the challenge, and it is a challenge. Remember, we're the regulator. We, we don't necessarily have a dog in this fight. And it's not for me to dictate how our the promotional spend of, of, of our sports books, uh, which incidentally, there'll be more participants. I'll get to that in a minute. Um, but at some point, they're going to have to say, well, wait a minute. If I really want to continue offering promotional play, beyond this first free year, I need to start to ratchet this back a little bit. And then you'll see the air come out of the balloon a little because now you don't have as much promotional play. What's well, a Players bonanza for spend. everybody right now, right? Like oh. this, how could it not be fun well, to gamble in sports at this point where they're giving you free money in the beginning? That, that it's sort of unprecedented in the history of local gambling, right? People that have been gambling to get free money as a, as a come on, there's never been such a thing. Ever, literally. It, it's a bonanza for everybody, but the state of Maryland. Right. Uh, unfortunately. And, and that was the intent was to, and that's why we put the 20% cap. We need to, as an agency, we need to protect the interest of the state of Maryland, which is making sure that the money earmarked for the education fund, specifically the blueprint for Maryland's future fund gets there. I want to do a segment on the blue because people always ask me, where's the money go? And, mm. you know, gambling and people having a version. Yeah. And I'm, I, I want to do a whole segment on the blue for just just to learn more about it, teach our audience a little bit where all this all this revenue will go and why we went to Annapolis and fought for 30 years to make all this legal that. The money is going to come in. Where is it going to go? I think that that's a, that's a segment for the future, though, John, I think. Oh, absolutely. And, and again, where we are today is that SWARC uh, this week also uh, uh, approved, awarded licenses to two other mobile entities and one other facility license. So that means uh, Bally's with the Bally Bet product and Win with their Win Bet product are now uh involved in uh the, will soon be involved in the control demonstration and final requirements and i would expect both of them to be up and running before the super bowl 
Uh, You're mentioning means- all the places I went to Vegas, you know, I mean, yeah, I lost sure. a win, but I won at Bally's, you know, like, right. it, and I've stayed right. at both of them at various points in, in Vegas. So these are familiar names. And, and, and so what that means, again, overall for, for 2023 is we have seven sports books today. We had three that were already approved in November that are still waiting their final uh, uh, marching orders. Now we've added two more. So we'll have five. That'll get us to 12. And there were 21 applicants. So we still have nine mobile applicants to process in the first part of 2023. So that by this time next year, by football season next year, we could have 21 mobile uh, entities, as well as anywhere from 15 to 20 retail. To me, that's a very mature market. Uh, maybe too mature, but this is, you know, that's, that's, that's uh, for a conversation at a later date. But that's the way the dynamics are going to play out. And as I said, uh, you know, we, we hope people are playing responsibly, that they're, they're, you know, they have a plan, they're sticking to it, um, and they're, they're having some fun along the way. Uh, but at some point, I think this whole thing normalizes, it stabilizes, it has to. All right. Well, this is your last chance to give the, the finger wag and the warning. And my wife's not even here and her sister's not listening about these tickets. And these these are great. The holiday cash drop. I'll be giving these away on our 31st anniversary at Costas on Thursday as part of the Maryland Lottery and our, our crab cake tour that we're going to be doing and shipping crab cakes and doing all that. But this is once a year you you give the the granddad speech and say, don't give these to kids. Don't put these in stock. They look like they're stocking, but they're not stocking stuffers for kids. You know what? When did I graduate from the dad speech to the granddad speech? I mean, that, I that was I, I caught that. I caught oh, that. It's the silver. Don't, it's just the silver. Don't I think, shaved, don't, my, I, I shaved <laughs> mine out. Don't think that was wasted on me. Absolutely. And thank you. And I know Roz did a good job of this uh, last week at, at Fadley's with the same message. Um, please gift responsibly. We ask you to play responsibly all year, but please gift responsibly. Lottery tickets are not child's play. Um, you know, get a nice little toy for them that's age appropriate. But lottery tickets are meant to be shared with 18 years of age and older. So please, again, um, we can we can all take that as a cautionary tale and, and have some fun over the holidays. So when Ross came down last week, I had Dan Rodericks there. I had Dave Etlin, who was my old news editor at the papers. So we're telling all newspaper stories. Dan's telling all his Baltimore stories. By the way, his show, you're not even from Baltimore. You would any. Anybody would love Dan's show. So Ross comes up and we're giving tickets out. And there's a lot of people because it kind of opened around 10, 1030. And I'm giving these Raven scratch offs. And then Ross comes in with a with the new holiday uh, a cash drops as well. And I was giving them out to people. And everybody there is obviously 18 years of age. But I went to give it to somebody. They're like, they held their hands back like alligator arms. They're like, I don't live in Maryland. And now I hear your speech about people driving through. And I said, no, 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 you're, you know, you're of the right age. You're, 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 well, you're part of the promotion. You can have this. But people were a little bit like, it's just Maryland and I can't take the ticket. So I'm learning what the rules are and what I can do and not do. And we did have a big winner. We had a, uh, we had a $50 winner at Fadley's the other day. I had a screamer in the middle of Fadley's at 11 o'clock in the morning. I won, <laughs> I won. So that's yeah. always the most fun. I hope we have the same uh, situation. We had a hundred dollar winner at Costas this time last year, as I remember. Whoa, uh, when whoa, I, I had whoa. some Raven scratch offs last year and a hundred dollar winner. So uh, John, yeah. I hope you're a big winner here in this holiday season. I hope you have a, a beautiful holiday. If we do not chat next week, I'm going in a little bit of a holiday cocoon. The man that saved my wife's life uh nine years ago on the bone marrow registry is visiting us he's coming over for the holidays he's bringing his oh. wife we're taking him to new york we're having chestnuts roasting on an open fire we're doing the american christmas for the german folks so it's going to be a special week here next week that is great news well, well happy holidays to you and, and yours as well and, and maybe you could have uh, maybe you could have him pick a a uh, maryland lottery ticket of his choice because again uh it looks like we're we're catering to uh, the tourism crowd is he german is he allowed to win uh, I, I, I think he can. I think. Okay, I'm, I'm not sure if he's allowed to win or not, but uh, yeah, he, uh, his 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 currency conversion is on him. But I think we will pay him in U.S. dollars. Any trash talk on uh, on the Browns this week? This is your opportunity. Uh, if, no, if none needed. I mean, we, we we are hardly in a position to trash talk. Uh, I I am I am frustrated beyond all get out, and uh, I just hope that no one gets uh, too horribly hurt on Saturday. It's almost baseball season. Yes. Now there's a positive spin. There's <laughs> a good that. story. <laughs> I knew you'd like yeah, that. Yeah. I can't call them the T word or the I word, the mighty yeah. guardians of Cleveland. Yes, Still not rolling yes. off the tongue, but it's getting there. John it's Martin is the director of all things, Maryland lottery and gaming. Uh, he has gifted me these fantastic holiday cash drop tickets to gift to you uh, at uh, Costas. Come on out, celebrate 31 years of this crazy program here. We're going to be over Costas doing the rock and roll thing with Gina shock from the go-go's and, uh, 
there's also going to be a bunch of musicians getting together as part of the show, talking about her big show at the Hard Rock two weeks from now. So we're having fun around here. I am Nestor. We are WNST, AM 1570, Towson, Baltimore, drinking eggnog in my Royal Farms coffee this morning, I must say, feeling a little seasonal. We are BaltimorePositive.com. Stay with us.